What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video and I know I kind of got some some scruff going here on my face and my hair is a little out of whack right now but you guys know the deal. Global pandemic going on, self-quarantining going on so you know you don't really have to do the basic things like shave or shower, continue to eat healthy, exercise, be productive. I mean you don't really have to do anything outside of just staying indoors and playing video games all day, right? <laughs> that's, oh man, that's, that's silly. And that actually escalated very quickly. But getting back to what this video is about, on the table in front of me, I have the 2020 iPad Pro, and if I can actually pick this up, the 2018 iPad Pro. And honestly, if you're not looking at the devices from the back, you can hardly tell the two apart but they don't just share external similarities, they also share a lot of internal similarities. They're compatible with a lot of the same accessories, they run the same exact software, and they're just identical in a lot of ways. So it begs the question, is it worth buying the 2020 iPad Pro if you can still find the 2018 iPad Pro? And if you have an 18, should you upgrade to the 20? Well, that's what this video is all about. So let's figure out what's different between this iPad Pro and this iPad Pro. The honest truth is that in order to keep this video shorter and higher quality for you, it's easier for us to focus on the very few differences these two models have instead of focusing on what's the same. So we're gonna focus on the two major differences, processing power and the camera systems. And outside of that, Everything is the same between these two models. So let's start with processing power. On the 2018 model, you have the A12X Bionic processor. And on the 2020 model, you have the A12Z Bionic processor. Now, performance differences between the two are negligible. And this is apparent for a couple different reasons. First, if you look at benchmark scores, which I know aren't always super indicative of how a piece of hardware can perform, the difference between a single core score and a multi-core score across the two devices are different by maybe five to 10 points in both single and multi-core score. And the best way to tell that there isn't that much of a performance improvement is in Apple's own marketing. Apple will be the first to tell you just how much of an improvement this year's model is over the previous model year. But if you take a look at the listing for the new iPad Pro, the only thing they focus on is continuing to tell you just how much faster this particular iPad is compared to other PCs out there, which is definitely true, but there's no direct comparison between the 2020 model and the 2018 model. So yeah, performance-wise, based on processor, they're nearly identical. Now in terms of RAM, the 11 inch Pro got upgraded from four gigs on the 2018 to six gigs on the 2020. The 12.9 inch model remained at six gigs of RAM across the line. So in terms of overall performance improvement, you're getting more of a performance bump on the 11 inch and you're hardly seeing a performance bump on the 12.9. And either way across the entire line, you're really not gonna be able to tell a difference. GPU wise, it's a little bit of a different story. So graphics on the 2018 model have been upgraded from seven cores to now eight cores on the 2020 model. And the performance difference is a little more evident in this particular case. If you look at benchmarks, the 2020 model outperforms the 2018 graphics wise by roughly 800 points, which is pretty nice. I don't know if it's something that you will necessarily see from day to day usage, depending on what you're doing with the iPad Pro, but that performance bump is definitely something to note. Now, when you look at Apple's website for the 2020 iPad Pro, they definitely spend a lot more time talking about the improved graphics on the 2020, especially compared to the fact that they didn't spend any time talking about the improved processing performance on the 2020 model. So yeah, whenever it comes to the performance difference between the 2020 and the 2018, the only real difference is the improved graphics. So if you're trying to weigh whether or not you should buy the 18 or the 20, and what you're most concerned about is performance, what you really need to be most concerned about is graphics performance. Now let's talk about cameras. So both devices feature the same seven megapixel front facing camera, and that's obviously built into the same face ID module on the front. Now, 
Both devices also share the same 12 megapixel wide angle camera on the back, but the 2020 model adds a 10 megapixel ultra wide angle camera and a LiDAR scanner, which is used for enhanced augmented reality. In terms of overall camera performance, you're really not getting much of a difference between the two for both photography and video. And honestly, I don't really see the appeal of an ultra wide angle camera on an iPad anyways. Taking photos on an iPad is cumbersome, it's difficult because of the size of the iPad, and honestly, mobile phones, especially flagship mobile phones, just have a lot better cameras. So I hope no one's seriously considering an iPad for photography or video performance overall. Now the LiDAR scanner is a bit of a different story. Now the LiDAR scanner is actually pretty cool and we talked about it for a little bit in our unboxing and first impressions video over the 2020 iPad Pro. If you guys missed that, you'll see a little banner pop up right here. You guys can click it and watch that video at any point in time. But LiDAR stands for light detection and ranging. And the way it works on the iPad Pro is it helps the iPad Pro better understand its surrounding using light and the ability to detect the distance of certain objects with light bouncing off that object and going back to the actual sensor itself. So it works a lot better in creating a much more accurate augmented reality experience compared to just a traditional camera setup on another device. Now this is really cool and it actually works really well, but I also think it's one of those features where unless you're like a professional interior designer or you're a developer who wants to push their app into augmented reality, you're probably not going to use this feature as much as you think you will. I'll be honest, I downloaded the IKEA app on my iPad Pro and I walked around the house for a little bit during my first couple days of using it and I placed random pieces of furniture around the house using augmented reality, but the appeal quickly loses its appeal after like a week or so. so Unless you're a professional or unless you're a developer who can make some serious use out of this, I would say it's nothing more than just a gimmick to keep yourself entertained, especially now that we're all kind of locked indoors. But outside of that, the 2018 iPad Pro and the 2020 iPad Pro are essentially identical. They utilize the same hardware build and design. They utilize the same Face ID technology. They're both compatible with the second generation Apple Pencil. They're both compatible with a lot of the same accessories outside of the ones that use precise cutouts for the camera modules. And they're both, thank you Apple, compatible with the new Magic Keyboard, which is going to improve the typing and trackpad experience on these devices. Which, by the way, we have that keyboard coming into the studio as we speak. So if you guys are excited to see that coverage, make sure you guys hit subscribe down below. But essentially what I'm telling you is, if you're on the market for a new iPad that has Face ID and all the cool tech that both of these bring to the table, I would give strong consideration to the 2018 iPad Pro instead of the 2020. Now, if you have a little bit of an older iPad Pro and you also can spring the extra cash, then sure, give the latest and greatest iPad Pro from Apple a try. You're definitely not going to be disappointed. Now, if you currently have a 2018 iPad Pro and you're contemplating upgrading to the 2020, I would hold off. You're probably going to find yourself disappointed by how similar this one is to the previous generation, especially when you consider how much extra money you're gonna spend just to get the new hardware. If you own a 2018, I'd wait for the next gen iPad Pro, which hopefully has a all display technology, embedded touch ID, micro LED display, who knows what kind of camera setup and awesome additional features, but I'd wait for that one if you still have a 2018. Now, Apple doesn't sell the 2018 iPad Pro anymore, but you can still find a lot of electronic retailers that do sell it at a discounted rate nonetheless. So now's a pretty good time to get yourself into an iPad Pro with Face ID, but just make sure you make the most fiscally responsible decision for yourself. All right, guys, I'm out of here. I'll catch you guys in the next one. As always, thank you so much for watching. Peace. 20 model. Now, processing wise, on the 2018, you're looking at an A12X Bionic processor, and on the 28, I already confused myself. <laughs>